I hope everybody on planet Earth gets to see it. That's a lot of people. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, obviously, Bob's message is important. Uh, not just now, but always. Um, it's timeless. Uh, so I'm just happy that a new generation of kids are going to learn about Bob. They're going to see see that through Kingsley and Lashana and the Marley family. Uh, so it's just an opportunity to continue his message. <laughs> Don't worry about a thing. Got every little thing going to be all right. You like that one? Yeah. Sometimes. The messenger has to become the message. Bob, I know it's dangerous. But you're the only one who can unite the people. You ready, Bob? No guns can stop this message. I want the world to change. And that time is no. Nardo, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Uh, no, thank you. I'm here with Black Things UK. Um, I just want to do a bit of an exploration into the process. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're no stranger to like biographical storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, King Richard was nominated for NAACP award. Um, can you talk to me about why this story was so important for you to tell? Yeah, I mean, it's Bob, Bob Marley, man. Everybody knows Bob. He's on every T-shirt, every uh, every button, every pen, every bag all over the world, but nobody knows anything about him, myself included. You might know the tunes, the melody, but, like, who's the man? Who's his, a little bit of a mystery behind him. So when I first got the script, I was like, oh, there hasn't been a movie made about Bob Marley. I had almost forgotten. I remember there's a documentary by Kevin McDonald, which was excellent. But um, yeah, they hadn't been able to mount a movie, a, a real movie. And I uh, heard big names like Scorsese and Oliver Stone at some point. And I was like, but why? Like, if they couldn't make it, like, what, what, why not? But I guess the universe was on my side. It was a spiritual film in that way. Um, so yeah, with the family's involvement, uh, gave me the confidence to say, hey, you want me to direct your father's film? Okay, well, how do we, how do we approach this thing in a way that maybe we haven't seen before? What, what was missing from the documentary that we can depict. That makes a lot of sense. And can you talk to me about spirit? Because I think, you know, you said it's a spiritual film. I feel like spirit is something that it is a golden thread that runs throughout all of Bob's music. It was very important to him. You know, he spoke a lot about Rastafari. Um, what was spiritual about it for you? Yeah, the, the whole experience. Um, like you said, it's in, it's in his lyrics. Um, so we leaned into that. We leaned into Rastafarianism. We haven't seen that on screen in, 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 in this way before. Um, so, we, you know, I learned about Rastafarianism in, uh, or the little bits that I could. Um, and it's cinematic. It's amazing um, to be able to capture a Nyambingi drum circle and what that was like um, with real Nyambingi leaders. Um, that was amazing. Uh, so yeah, but there was just so many moments uh, of feeling like Bob was around, guiding, guiding this film. You know, the spine of the film is the music, you know, uh, and so his lyrics say it all. And it was us. It was up to us to sort of shape a story around what he had already given us. And amongst other places, I mean, just leading into experience. New York is one of the places yeah. that you grew up in. I'm a West Indian. I'm Guyanese. Yeah. You know, and we there's a massive you know, West Indian, Caribbean community in New York. Mm -hmm. Did you lean into some of your experiences growing up when it came to directing the film? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, uh, look, I grew up in a black household and Bob was always around. Um, a lot of my friends are Jamaicans, New York Jamaicans, but they're Jamaican. Um, and the island ain't that far, you know, from New York. It's a three hour, three hour hop, skip and a jump. Um, I was fortunate to go to Jamaica to make Top Boy a few years before this, and so I feel like I have some roots there or something. You know, we always feel connected to that to that place. It feels, uh, and there's something spiritual about being in Jamaica. Um, the people are so prideful, um, so protective of Bob, his legacy. Um, we really had so many supporters uh, in the making of this film. Um, but yeah, of course, you you bring your personal story to every film that you make. That's who you are. You know, this film is just an extension of me as an artist, uh, my vision, how I see the world. Um, and hopefully you feel that in the work. Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely feel it. <laughs> and I think for me, you know, black 
Caribbean stories aren't often told. You don't hear them enough. What did you hope for the cultural impact of the movie? Well, I hope everybody on planet Earth gets to see it. That's a lot of people. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, obviously, Bob's message is important. Uh, not just now, but always. Um, it's timeless. Uh, so I'm just happy that a new generation of kids are going to learn about Bob. They're going to see see that through Kingsley and Lashana and the Marley family. Uh, so it's just an opportunity to continue his message. You know, our film was a vessel to continue the work that Bob did. It was work. It was about you know, uh, it was about unity and love mm. and peace. And for us to carry that legacy, it, it was important. And um, I'm just proud to be a part of that. And we're not, finally, we're not easy people as Caribbean <laughs> people, right? We're very specific about our depictions, yeah. et cetera. Um, lastly, could you tell me what was difficult about the process? I mean, all of it was difficult because of who Bob is. And like you said, you know, the bar was really high. Like, don't mess with Bob, man. Bob's yeah, not yeah, somebody yeah. you want to <laughs> Bob, ooh. You know, don't so you, you can tell you, yeah, it's like, <laughs> Your boy's like, you sure yeah, you yeah. want <laughs> You sure you want to? <laughs> We were just waiting. Was great. Yeah. Just, 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 you know, just leave it. Up. Like, you know, you could feel the warning signs. Like, the, you know, shots fired. You know, it's a little bit of that feeling. But, but why not, man? If it's not one of us, if it's not one of us doing it, um, we got to do it right. At least, I, I, you know, you have to have conviction that you can handle it, or it's, you know, it's in the attempt of trying to get it right. I think people can feel that at the very least. Like. We went at it hard. We went at it with real dialect, with you know real patois. We went at it and we shot in Trenchtown like we weren't playing. We were coming at it like through the side door, not the front door. Um, you know, I don't think a biopic's ever been made like this before. Um, and 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 in this way, it's a foreign language film with no subtitles. Um, that's pretty. That's pretty daring for a studio to give me the ability to do that and try to craft it in a way that is universal and 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 universally accepted is is rare so um kudos to them kudos to our our, our cast our crew everybody that uh and obviously the marley family um for their support the uh, you know to help us bring this to life um you know it's incredible for me well, Ronaldo, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for the film. And thank you for acknowledging Jamaican Patois mm -hmm. as an official language because yeah. people don't often do that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Appreciate you.